Hello guys, so welcome to another insightful video on my channel. I'm so glad you've made time to join me once again. And uh, just to let you know, we are now on a summer vacation. So trust me, from now, the videos will be coming back to back. I mean, back to back. Yes, just for you to know. So if you're new here, my name is Kins and I'm currently pursuing a master's degree in economics at Eastern Illinois University. And I double as a graduate teaching assistant. So I'm just here to kind of assist you in your scholarship journey. That, as, I, as I always said, a scholarship is not what it's not lottery. So fast forward, with this episode, we're going to talk about bank statement or showing proof of finance during your F1 visa interview. What are the pro checklists or what are the things you need to know to avoid being denied because of your what? Your proof of finance. What do you need to do and what do you not need not to do? So that's what we're going to capture here in this video. So if you are ready to flow with me, just get your notepads and start ready and let's move. Tada! Energy, energy, energy. All right, guys. So welcome back to this insightful session. So I'm going to take it cool with this one. The energy I have to drop it down. So we take it one step at a time. All right. So with this session, I mainly focus on those who got admission with funding whereby their funding does not cover their entire cost of attendance. Let's say health insurance and some other school fees. Let's say you had a GA and you need to provide a bank to cover for, I mean, just some, I mean, deficit. I mean, like 4K, 5K, 3K, 2K. And also those who didn't get funding at all, or those who had partial scholarship, whereby they just, just need to provide what proof of finance or what we normally call what bank statement. So with this one, I'm just going to tackle that. So what do you need to know about a bank statement before you submit to the school? And also, what do you need to know about a bank statement before you submit to, to the embassy for your interview? Are we good? That is that. So let's start. So the first one, it should be current. When I say current, it means it should be dated within six months. As of the day, as of the day that it was printed, that you were sending to your school for your school to issue your I-20, it should be within what? Six, what? Six months. And also, um, before you turn it in, before you go for your interview, you should ensure your bank statement is still within what six months. Sometimes it becomes difficult for you to get a caring statement during your interview. But I would advise that if you can get a caring statement for your interview, please do so. Please do so. That is the first point. That is about the current, I mean, state of your bank statement. And the next one is the cost, I mean, sorry, the total balance in your account. The total balance as at the day that, I mean, closing account. So it should, I mean, this is a subjective view, but it works and it makes sense. It should be at least above 50% of your what? Your deficit. Let's say you are having 5K deficit. The bank statement should be, let's say 10K, I mean, Dallas plus. Okay, it shouldn't be less than 5K or, I mean, equals 5K. Because someone is sponsoring you, uh, or let, if it is a statement, that is fine. But if someone is an external person is sponsoring you, try as much as possible to get a bank statement that is what fifty percent above what what you are required to. I mean, provide. That is, that is I mean, the second one. Now the now the third one is about credibility. Credibility. How do you ascertain whether a bank statement is legit or credible? Now with this issue, let me just take my time and let you understand something here. Half colleagues. Who have lost the admission packages funding packages and they have been denied they have, some have been banned to not even apply to some schools some have been banned at the embassy because they submitted what fake or illegal bank statement so now how do you ascertain whether a bank statement you are taking from someone is legit or not the first thing is before we come to the um, the what I mean the, the, the watermark, the logo, the stamps, and those stamps that you should you should check, and also the person's name, um, tally with um, date of birth and every other stamps, please don't buy bank statement. I would never advise that. Never buy a bank statement. Uh, I mean, for some reasons it doesn't even make sense. It's it's quite illegal. I would never promote that. But the thing is that right now you shouldn't put. Probably you, you are having a full fund and a full tuition waiver, a monthly stipend, you just need a bank statement, it's becoming it becoming difficult. So you have no part, you have no option than to buy. Please don't don't put your life at risk. Don't do that. So that is one thing, making a point for us at now about the issue of what credibility. Never do that. 
Now, the, the other one to you is that you should ensure that at least you get a clearance letter from the bank making the point five. Clearance letter. How to ascertain if the bank statement is legit. Try and let that person attach a clearance what letter. Now, the clearance letter is from the bank, I mean, um, accentuating to the fact that this person, this person whom we have provided bank statement with, I mean, for is saving with us with i mean specifying the type of account the amount and everything so that makes it more what more legit now i know some schools what they do is that they will even reach out to the bank some schools do that they reach out to the bank for the bank to get back to them before they give you i20 please don't joke the last part of that this same point is that now what about a situation whereby you are placed under administrative review administrative review whereby the embassy will have to call, follow up, and check. You know, some countries like Canada, they don't even have time. <laughs> they, will, they, will, they, they don't even have time for the interview. They will be doing some of these stuff. So you can't even try. Okay, I'm not saying US is weak. No, never. I'm not saying that. But please don't think you can beat or cheat the system. These are the first part of what the point. Now, the other part is that when you are submitting a bank statement and it is um, a company statement, the seed point, and it's a company statement try as much as possible to get what um, a letter from the company to support your what your your statement although sponsorship letter is important from i mean either personal or company account but if it is from a company statement and let's say for instance um it is a soap partnership i mean one man business i mean or you you your, the person whom you know through whom which you had access to the company is the owner try and get another clearance letter to us into it and indeed um um, this um, this company, Amdi, like he, I mean, him or she, oh, I'm sorry, he or she, well, for NASA, he or she can, I mean, you know, that money can be easily withdrawn from the account. That's my point. So that's that's one thing that you should you should take notice of. So let's take it from there. All right, guys. So let's pick it from here. So with the other point, um, I just want to touch on the issue of those who normally want to find out if it is okay to send a face deposit account or a treasury bill account. You know, please. I know people who submitted such accounts and had the I-20 issued, but I mean, I don't know anybody who has sent it to the interview or, I mean, anything of that sort. But these are all means of, I mean, showing proof of finance. But the thing is that, please, if, you're fa if you have a good family package, don't try. And, and if you have the option of getting a bank statement, unless maybe, you know, there are instances whereby you don't have any option than to go with such, I mean, let's say a fixed deposit whereby the due date is very close. In such a scenario, please, I mean, I can't, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say, but all I'm saying is that don't put your life in jeopardy. If you have a good funding package, try. I know it's tough, but it is not advisable to send such, um, such staffs for the interview and probably to your, for your I-20. You may get I-20, but at the embassy, no, you know, the school and the embassy, trust me, <laughs> they, are, they are different entities. Okay, they are different entities. So that is just that. All right. So the next point is that you should ensure that the person whom you have, I mean, collected the bank statement from, the job he or she does tallies with the total amount stated on the statement. You can't go and submit a 500k USD account and they ask you, what job is the person doing? Then you come and tell me that the person is a, a, a phone dealer. It doesn't tell you. All right. So now with the last point, I'm going to talk about those who submit, I mean, an I-24, sorry, a bank statement for an I-20 and they intend to send a different statement for the actual embassy because probably they are having some difficulties here and there. You know, in such case, it's so simple. With the issue of, I mean, submitting different I-20 for the interview, it can only be done when the I-20 is submitted, okay, or, uh, sorry, the bank statement you submitted on the I-20, it was captured as a category not as a name let's say um you submitted your uncle statement and they wrote their family funds twenty thousand us dollars with that one and and then also please the last part is it's two parts they capture as a category like let's say i mean uh, family funds parents that is fine you can submit the difference between the interview but it is also contingent on the school writing the exact deficit so let's say you submitted 10k us dollars they shouldn't write the exact 10k on i20 okay they should write the exact deficit the school is expecting from you let's say you're having 2k and you send to 10k usd account 
they should write the 2k there, not the 10k. Because if they write the 10k there, that means that in case you want to send a different statement account, although it is parent, but you should get a 10k, exactly 10k bank statement for your interview. Mm -hmm. If you don't get it, just ask me in the comment section and I'll be glad to assist you. Okay, so let's sign out. So that's that. That's all about the bank statements. And um, our next episode, I'll be hosting other, my other colleagues as I've been doing. I want to also share their insights and also other episodes will be dropping for those who want to prepare for the those who are preparing for the I mean um, 2023 applications prank and also fall intake so just stay tuned and if you have any questions please ask them in the comment section and I'll be glad to assist you then also you can check my channel description for my email reach out to me and I'll also be glad to assist you tada energy 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 energy